नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सुद्ध गुड ईवनिंग टू एव्री वन डिय धम्म फ्रेंड्स दिस् इज द थर्ड धम्म टोक वी आर् डूयिंग अंडर दिस धम्म सीरी सो फस्ट वी हेव टॉक्ट अबउट द द नेसिटी ऑफ द कॉन्सट्रेशन then last time uh, we talked about the akusala kusala and the punya uh, these things uh, we have been uh, talking about under the prerequisite of the concentration so this is also a uh, part of that sermons uh, series what we are talking about the uh, prerequisites of the uh, concentration so when we are talking about these uh, facts last time we discuss about the akusalas uh, how you uh, like preventing from those akusalas and how you do the kusalas and the uh, punya kiriyavattu the punyas so why we have to learn about these things what is the necessity do we have to learn about these things do we have to get an idea understanding about these areas so uh, what is the reason as a buddhist as a practitioner our ultimate goal is to achieve the ultimate liberation or the nibbana ultimate nibbana nibbana so uh, to achieve that nibbana why we have to why what is the necessity of a nibbana do we have to uh, achieve that nibbana as a buddhist as a person uh, what is the necessity because uh, when we think about this our present life we th- we know that it is full of sufferings everyone knows about the uh, it, uh, it it might differ from person to person but we know uh, it is full of sufferings so uh this is uh, not a thing what you have to tell by someone else we all experience those kind of uh, sufferings from the birth until we die until we leave from this life that is the truth so what is this life this is there is no a uh, person there is no a self or a soul or something this is a non self existence what is the existence what it contain it contains the five aggregates uh, we call the uh, rupa rupa khanda we call the four and the vedana sanya sankhara and vijnana uh, the feeling uh, or the perception and the other mental formations and the consciousness we these are the five aggregates uh, contains in this existence there is no any soul there is no any person there is uh, no any self but mm, we know there is a existence of these five aggregates as a human uh, that is a existence of these five aggregates so we know this human life is a place where we uh, experience many kind many uh, kinds of sufferings even though we go to a divine world or a brahma world still it contains sufferings we have to think about that divine world is a place where you where you have a very luxury life comfortable life with so many facilities yeah the brahma worlds also the same so you have uh, like uh, su- suppressed many defilements for a longer period and you experience a very uh, like a very comfortable place there in the brahma world so even though you get a birth in this divine world or a brahma world still you are not free from suffering why that is that suffering is not uh, you have to describe or define by just uh, the suffering by the feeling by the body or the by the mental suffering because wherever you go there is the existence of this five aggregate 
Sometimes it may be one aggregate only. Sometimes four aggregates. Sometimes five aggregates like what we have now in the human world, divine world. Uh, these places we experience these five aggregates. So, uh, the Buddha is saying, Sankhittena Panchupadana Khanda Dukkha. As a summary, wherever this existence of these five aggregates is there, the suffering is there. This is not just by the feeling. This is not just by the uh, Vedana you like experience by your body or by your mind. Wherever the five aggregates are there, there are three like characteristics we call the impermanence, anicca, and the suffering, dukkha, and anatta. Is the non-self. Wherever these five aggregates are there, these three characteristics are there. So we cannot get rid of these uh, impermanence, suffering, and the non-self existence. So, uh, which is these all the sub aggregates are subjected to these characteristics. So that is why Buddha is saying, Sankhittena Panchupadana Khanda Dukkha. Wherever these aggregates are there, the suffering is there. The dukkha is following these five aggregates. So even you uh, get a birth in this human world, in the divine world, in the Brahma world, even uh, you are living as a Brahma, still you are not free from, you have not uh, get rid of, of these five aggregates. That means all these you are subjected to the suffering because the impermanent suffering and the non-self existence is there. So that's why wherever you go, the suffering is there. This suffering of these five aggregates can be understood only when you have some level of uh, insight knowledges. Because now we can now we can think, we can learn something, we can listen to Dhamma, and we can just have a like a inferential rough idea. Okay, the wherever the five aggregates are there, the suffering is there. We are subjected to the suffering. That is a inferential thing, inferential knowledge. We call the anumana jnana, anumana jnana or anubodha jnana. It's a rough idea, but we have not experienced the correct suffering, correct uh, like uh, understanding uh, by ourselves. We call the uh, intuitive knowledge or we call the pachakka jnana or the pativeda jnana. We are just thinking, okay, we are experiencing the suffering. Wherever we go, the five, five aggregates are there. So we are subjected to the to the uh, impermanence, suffering and the non-self existence. Uh, so we are subjected to the suffering uh, at the end. So that is a, that is an inferential knowledge. But if you want to experience that thoroughly by yourself, by intuitive knowledge, by the pachakka jnana, you should have, you should uh, like develop, you should uh, uh, create something, you should achieve some uh, inside knowledge, which is uh, like uh, starting from the Udaya Jnana, we call the knowledge about the rising and the vanishing or the passing away, we call the Udaya Jnana. Uh, Starting from that Deva Jnana, there are few insight knowledges we have to achieve step by step. When someone has these kind of insight knowledges, then he will realize, uh, like by, by his intuitive knowledge, we call the Pachakka Jnana, uh, by himself, these five aggregates are full of suffering. They are subjected to these impermanence, suffering, and the non-self existence. That is the place where you experience by yourself, by the wisdom, thoroughly. It is now you are not believing that thing because uh, because Buddha is said. Now you are experienced by yourself. Now you have a correct knowledge by your wisdom. Now you are believing that because you have experienced that. Wherever the five aggregates are there, these three characteristics are there. So those five aggregates we call the self, we call the me, we call the us. Uh, these all the existence are subjected to the suffering. Then only, then only you can understand the like the liberation 
why we have to achieve a liberation why we need a nibbana why we have to why we have to focus on this nibbana and we should do something effortfully to achieve that ultimate liberation that is where we uh, realize that it is the most comfortable state or what is what we have to achieve to get rid of these uh, five aggregates because uh, in the nibbana there is no any aggregate even there even there is a single aggregate in this nibbana it is also subjected to the suffering you are not uh, you have we, you will not get the relief from these five aggregates of the suffering but in nibbana in this uh, ultimate liberation there is no any single aggregate it's a state we can become so then when someone is having some uh, insight knowledge by doing the insight uh, meditation effortfully then only he can uh, like it is also inferential knowledge because uh, you can like intuitive uh, uh, you can uh, achieve you can experience nibbana only by the uh, noble paths before that you cannot achieve by your wisdom you cannot uh, like uh, have that nibbana before you generate the noble paths by your consciousnesses so even though you are developing these insight knowledges still you are uh, like uh, thinking about you, you you are having a view about the nibbana but still it's a inferential knowledge you have not experienced the nibbana but you know uh, like by your experience these suffering of the five aggregates and what is the necessity of the ultimate nibbana then you are like uh, you are doing something more effortfully to achieve that nibbana to get rid of the five aggregates which is a suffering that is why we need to do the vipassana or the insight meditation effortfully until we achieve the uh, at least uh, some levels of insight knowledge starting from the udeva uh, jnana we call the knowledge about the uh, rising and uh, cessation so when someone is having those insight knowledge he is like somewhat uh, confident about the path because he has experienced the actual suffering of these uh, five aggregate now he has that uh, like uh, very uh, determination to achieve the ultimate nibbana he knows that is the uh, only solution to get rid of the five aggregates to get rid of the sansara to get rid of this uh, suffering so then he is doing something more effortfully he is doing the further meditation and he is trying to generate the uh, noble paths and the fruitions until that we have some some kind of a understanding some kind of a view about the nibbana about the suffering about these five aggregates about the impermanent suffering and the uh, non self uh, existence but it is just a uh, inferential knowledge we call the anumana jnana we have just rough knowledge rough idea about these things about these facts or the areas but uh, we have to develop these things we have to develop some insight knowledge for that we have to uh, do the insight meditations effortfully so we have talked about these things several times so in order to do the uh, like uh, insight meditation effortfully you should have some level of uh, concentration we call the samadhi chittas ekagrata we should have some some at least some level of uh, concentration it can be uh, absorption concentration we call the jhanas and it can be the uh, access concentration we call the upachara samadhi or less than that you are far behind from the access concentration but still if you are doing something uh, to develop the tranquility or the samadhi uh, samatha still you are eligible to do the vipassana or the insight meditation effortfully then only you can achieve the insight knowledge then you can experience these uh, what i have said before so in order to do the 
in order to achieve the vipassana knowledge so you should do the insight meditation effortfully in order to do the insight meditation effortfully you should have at least some level of concentration but to develop the concentration even you should have some prerequisites that is uh, by doing all the bad things and good things uh, by doing all the by uh, allowing all the kilesas defilements to act in yourself uh, you cannot develop the samadhi you cannot develop the concentration you are not eligible to uh, because you can do something uh, to develop the samadhi but it will not uh, like uh, productive you will not achieve the uh, ekagata you, you will not achieve the concentration so before that you should uh, become a virtuous per- person you have to follow a moral conduct or the disciplinary code whatever entitled to you you should protect those precepts whatever the uh, things you are following so you have to become a virtuous person first that is why we have to learn about the virtue morality what is the sila and according to do that you should have understanding about uh, what should be done and what should not be done what uh, from what kind of things we have to refrain abstain so some things we we have to realize these are bad things we should not do these things we have to abstain from these bad deeds or the akusalas unwholesome things and uh, next level is you have to just like uh, you are abstaining is just a kusala abstaining is a good thing wholesome one because you are not doing the akusalas you are just abstaining from them refraining from them that is not enough you have to do something like you have to do the dana you have to do some meditation you have we, we have discussed about these things what you have to do why what you have to follow so that is why we have to learn these things our ultimate goal can be a like a, a different thing but without having those uh, knowledges about these areas we cannot develop this practice we cannot develop this practice that is why we are just uh, like describing we are discussing about these akusalas uh, kusalas punyas and the virtue about uh, without having a proper understanding about these fundamentals or the basic levels we cannot go to the higher levels of this sp- spiritual uh, practice so that is why we are talking about these things so today we are going to discuss about Uh, the virtue some facts which is related to the virtue so uh, this is the handout i prepared for that one for the sermon so we are going to talk about these uh, topics what i have mentioned in this uh, uh, handout what is the virtue we have we should have a rough idea uh, about the virtue what kind of a thing and the benefits of the virtue and the foremost classification so there are many classification about the virtue but we are like uh, we are discussing about one uh, foremost classification about this uh, virtue and uh, when we talk about these uh, classifications what are the elements of this chatupar suddhi sila we call the uh, fourfold purification of the morality we call chatupar suddhi sila what are the elements and we will we should have a understanding about this uh, each and every Uh, level of this uh, fourfold uh, purification morality and uh, how they are mutually interconnected with each other and how they are supporting each other and uh, how this virtue become a prerequisite for the concentration that is the main thing what we are talking about because before we go to the concentration we should know what we have to uh, like fulfill how to become a eligible person in order to develop the concentration so uh, first we have to talk about the virtue and we have at last we have to talk about how this virtue is uh, helping uh, how the concentration is supported by this virtue or the morality then uh, step by step we are uh, we are going to uh, talk about the first one we then we can go to the other things step by step uh, what is the virtue uh, what is the virtue this is the 
foremost step. Virtue is in this spiritual practice. This is the foremost step, or the the first stage in the spiritual path. And the, this is the uh, we can say the foundation. When we talk about a very huge building, high-rise building, uh, they should have it should have a, a, like a very strong foundation. Otherwise, you cannot build that building uh, to a very higher level. It will collapse. Likewise. Uh, for a building, it should have it should it should have a like a very good uh, foundation, strong foundation. Likewise, when we develop this spiritual training or the spiritual path within ourselves, we should have a very strong foundation that is called the virtue. So this virtue is the uh, it's a big it's beginning with the volition we call the chetana volition present in one who abstains from killing abstain from stealing, abstaining from uh, sexual misconduct, those kind of things. These are beginning with the volition, Chetana. You have, a, you are thinking about, so I have to refrain from these bad or unwholesome things. That is called the virtue. And we call that is the Varitta Sila. That is the abstaining part, or the refraining part. You are just avoiding, avoiding some a bad deeds or the unwholesome things that is called the varitta sila it is the one segment of this uh, morality or the virtue the other thing is one who fulfills the practice of the duties the duties we can say uh, the duties uh, should be fulfilled uh, towards the teachers towards the parents towards the colleagues so there are many duties as a lay person or as a monk there are many different different duties so we have to do this we have to fulfill these things we cannot avoid these uh, duties what we have to uh, do it is a uh, the necessity uh, because we have to do these duties or responsibilities towards the other uh, persons or the other segments in the society so that is called the charita sila what we have to follow that is the uh, one segment of this sila one, the first part is abstaining part and the second part is the, the doing part, what we have to follow. And uh, there are a few uh, like perspectives we can see, we can uh, understand or we can analyze this sila or the virtue. Uh, let's talk about few things about this, uh, some perspectives. The first thing is the chetana sila, we call the uh, virtue as the volition. Volition is a chetana. Uh, we are defining the sila. These are not, not just the classification. We are just trying to define the sila. Uh, when we are trying to define, first we can talk about the chetana sila. That is the volition. Virtue as the volition. We are defining the virtue by using the volition. One, one mental factor. Uh, the volition or the chetana present in one who abstains from killing, abstaining from the uh, stealing, abstaining from the mis sexual misconduct, these kind of things, when someone is abstaining from these things, the chetana, that mental factor arises within our consciousness. We call uh, that thing uh, as the chetana sila, or that is, that is uh, like subjected to the uh, varita sila. We call about the charita sila, what we have to uh, follow, what we have to do, the doing part. When we talk about the doing part, about the duties, then someone is fulfilling, someone is following these duties, then there is also a volition, we call the chetana. That chetana also we are defining as the sila. As the sila. So, as the charita sila, we have a volition, and the varita sila, we have a volition. volition. So, uh, both these volitions we can define as a sila. We call that um, specifically the chetana sila. Or that chetana sila is, uh, can be defined uh, in this way also. The seven volitions, we have talked about the seven, uh, ten full course of actions last, uh, in, during the last sermon. What are those? The uh, panatipata, adinnadana, uh, kamesumichachara. Likewise, we have talked about uh, ten full course of actions we call the uh, akusala kamma patha. 
So uh, among them, the first seven, excluding the uh, uh, abhijja, the covetousness, and the uh, uh, the byapada, we call the hatred or the ill will. Uh, and the last one is the michaditti, the wrong view. Excluding those things, the first seven full course of actions. When someone, uh, someone is, uh, uh, when someone is uh, abstaining from these full course of actions, we call the. Uh, when someone is abstaining from these uh, first seven full course of actions, the volition which is arising. Uh, in his consciousness while he is abstaining from these seven full course of actions, Kamapatas. We call that also Chetana Sila because we are defining based on the volition or the Chetana. So that is the second way. And uh, we can define the Sila in a different perspective, in a different way uh, like using the Chetasikas. The other Chetasikas we call uh, like Virati likewise. Uh, we call Chetasika Sila, virtue as the consciousness concomitant, that means what, what is uh, like attached with the consciousness, we call the mental factors. Chetana also, the volition is also a, uh, like a uh, mental factor, the major mental factor. But uh, apart from the Chetana, sometimes we are like defining the Sila or the virtue uh, by using the other mental factors. Let's talk about this thing, the abstains, the abstains that we call the, uh, abstains means the virati. When we are abstaining from something, when we are abstaining from the bad or unwholesome deeds, uh, there is a call, there is a mental factor arises within our mind in these kusala, uh, chittas or the wholesome uh, consciousnesses uh, we call that the virati, abstains. We know in the Eightfold Noble Path, uh, samma vacha, samma kammanta, samma ajiva. These are called the virati or the abstains. When someone is uh, abstaining from these unwholesome things, we call the uh, full course of actions, uh, the bad deeds. This abstains is there. Because you are abstaining from something, so the abstinence is there, it's a mental factor arises in that particular consciousness. We call the virati. When someone is abstaining from the killing, the first one, then the abstinence of samma kammanta will be there. That is one, uh, there are three abstinences, uh, so uh, three viratis. So, among them, Samma Kammanta will arise when you are abstaining from killing, when you are abstaining from stealing. When someone is abstaining from uh, lying, then uh, there, are, there is also abstinence is there, we call the Samma Vacha. Samma Vacha means uh, one uh, virati, one abstains, so it will arise in that particular consciousness when you are abstaining from uh, lying, when you are abstaining from uh, slandering, when you are abstaining from harsh speech, when you are abstaining from vain talks, when you are abstaining from these uh, like verbal unwholesome actions, this abstinence of sammavacha will be there. So these abstinences are we define as a sila. It's a different classification, different def definition. Oh, the, we, are, we were talking about this first seven full course of actions in the Chetana Sila. Uh, so, the latter part, the letter three, we call the uh, non covetousness and the non ill will and the, uh, the right view. We call the Anabhijja, Abhyapada, and Sammaditti. So, in these full course of actions, when you are like uh, abstaining from these full course of actions, uh, not like the first seven. During the first seven full course of actions, we are talking that kamma, kamma, the action will be the chetana, the major mental factor will be the chetana, will be the chetana or the volition. In these last three full course of actions, 
the uh, the main the major mental factor will not be the volition will not be the chetana when you are abstaining from these uh, non uh, covetousness when you are having the non covetousness the major major mental factor would be the uh, alobha alobha uh, non covetousness and the uh, when you are abstaining from the uh, ill will the main major mental factor would be the non will will we call the adosa and when you are abstaining from the wrong view when you are developing the right view within yourself the major mental factor will not be the volition but hmm, the wisdom we call the panya samaditti means the panya you are doing that by your wisdom so uh, in the chetasika sila uh, we can we can define the sila by three remaining states consisting of non covetousness we call the uh, anabijja and the abhyapada and the right view we call the samaditti that is the another perspective and sometimes we uh, define this sila uh, by this uh, virtue as restraint or the refrain abstaining uh, we call the sangvara sila the there are it is five fold the first one is the restraint by the rules of the disciplinary code or the moral conduct we call that patimokka sangvara patimokka sangvara you are restraining from the bad deeds or the unwholesome things uh, or the these akusala kammas by just following the precepts what you have uh, what you are following so that is based on your moral conduct or the disciplinary code so that is what we call you are restraining by base by the uh, by using your disciplinary code based on your moral conduct that is called the patimokka sangvara and the second one is the restraint by the mindfulness that is we call the sati sangvara when you are doing the day to day works duties you are very mindful about the things what you are doing so uh, then you will be uh, you will uh, eligible to like restrain from the akusalas because you are always focusing what you are doing so uh, you can easily avoid you can easily abstain from the uh, akusalas or the unwholesome things that is called the uh, sati sangvara because it is done by the mindfulness and the third one is the restrain by the knowledge you can think about uh, whether it is like uh, suitable for you you can be a father you can be a mother uh, you can be a teacher you 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 are a, like a, you are like uh, like keeping uh, maintaining a very good reputation in the society so you can think uh, is it suitable for me as a father as a mother as a teacher as a repu- uh, reputable person uh, whether this is suitable for me by your wisdom then you think this is not suitable for me this is akusala when the others get to know about these things uh, they will blame me they will insult me this is not suitable so it will not be a good thing for my children for my students for my colleagues for my relatives so by using the wisdom he tries to abstain he tries he tries to restrain from these bad deeds we call that uh, because it is done by the wisdom we call the jnana sangvara because restrained by using the knowledge or the wisdom and the restrained by the patience sometimes uh, if you cannot tolerate something uh, like uh, not good hmm, uh, then you tend to do something bad because when someone is insulting you when someone is using harsh words towards you if you cannot if you cannot develop the patience uh, within yourself then you also try to Uh, do some speak some harsh words you also try to uh, do something by your uh, body so because you lost your patience if you have the patience you can if you can tolerate that situation then you will not go to do these kind of uh, bad things like you are not going to do something uh, bad by your uh, verbal actions or the bodily actions so that is called uh, based on your patience you are try to protect yourself you are try to restrain from the bad deeds we call that the 
uh, so we call the Kanti Sangvara. Kanti means the patience. The fifth one or the last one is the restraint by the energy or the effort. Sometimes when the, the climate is not good, when it is very hot in that area, sometimes the, the other things, uh, sometimes you may have some sicknesses, uh, you have to tolerate these things sometimes. Otherwise, you tend to do the bad deeds because the, uh, the environment or your health condition is not good or the, uh, the weather is not good, the climate is not good because you cannot tolerate that situation in a proper way. Then you try to do something bad, try to do something unwholesome because you couldn't tolerate that by your effort. Sometimes by uh, deploying your effort, by developing your effort, sometimes you can uh, abstain some unwholesome thing. You can restrain from these uh, bad things. So the akusala, we call that is, that is based on the effort, we call the virya. So this is called the virya sangvara. This is some uh, another perspective we can analyze the sila. And the last one, I'm going to talk about the these definitions of the sila. We call the non-transgression virtue, which is based on the non-transgression. Uh, we know we all have these anusayas, we call the latent tendencies. Uh, we have the tanha anusaya, avijja anusaya, uh, ditti anusaya, vichikicha anusaya. They are like, uh, we can say, they are anusayas that we, they are not coming to the emerging state, but uh, those conditions are within ourselves. We call the latent tendencies or the anusayas. Because they are not coming to every uh, and each and every moment uh, to our mind. Because we are not uh, a hatred person every time. We are not a very attached person every time. We don't have that doubtfulness in our mind all and uh, all the day. Because sometimes it comes and sometimes it vanishes. It arises and it will pass away. Because some because we have not uh, like eradicate these things. We have not uh, suppressed these qualities within ourselves. So, we are with the latent tendencies. Sometimes, based on the objects what we are taking from our uh, like the uh, faculties or the bases, we are taking some, uh, we are dealing with the outside world. We are dealing with the external objects. So, sometimes, uh, based on these external objects, based on the things what we are taking through these our uh, internal faculties, we call the ayatanas, uh, sometimes these latent tendencies comes to the uh, emerging state, we call the pariyuttana, because these latent tendencies, the avijjanusaya, tanhanusaya, patighanusaya, they come to the emerging states. The, how they come to the emerging state? we will have a loba mula chitta, a consciousness which is rooted with the loba, with, with, with the craving or the attachment. That is the uh, place, that is a moment where this tanha anusaya or the latent tendencies of that craving which is coming to the emerging state, we call the pariyuttana. When you have a, a dosa mula chitta or uh, consciousness which is rooted with the uh, hatred, then that is the very moment where the patiganusaya or the latent tendency comes to the emerging state. Because uh, uh, each and every uh, unwholesome consciousness is, uh, it, it contains with the amoha. Because avijja anusaya, uh, all the time when you have akusala chitta or the unwholesome consciousness, you are always the avijja anusaya, that latent tendency comes to the emerging state as the like the uh, ignorance. So uh, sometimes uh, these uh, attachment comes with the ignorance, sometimes the hatred comes with the ignorance, sometimes the doubtfulness. When you have a vichikicha chitta, uh, uh, consciousness with the, with the doubt, doubt. Uh, when you have that uh, doubt feeling, then also the latent tendency of avijja, ignorance, and the latent tendency of vichikicha, doubtfulness, which will come to the emerging state. So this emerging state uh, is always happening. 
the bad thing is when you tries to do when he when you tries to do something by your verbal actions and the physical actions then this transgression state comes because we call the vitikkama state vitikkama uh, state is the transgression state so the latent tendencies we are with the latent tendencies time to time based on the objects we are taking from the outside world uh, these uh, akusalas or the latent tendencies comes to the emerging state comes to the mind we are having a consciousness with that uh, like bad mental factors so uh, the bad thing is which is, which violates your sila which violates your virtue is when you do something by your verbal actions by your bodily actions then it comes to transgression state if someone can like uh, if someone can limit these uh, emerging states within himself by not doing something uh, by his body or by his word or the speech then he is a virtuous person even a virtuous person can have these kind of emerging states that is a normal thing that is why we need to do some meditation to suppress these uh, defilements uh, to avoid these defilements come to a emerging state that is a different task different process you have to do you have to develop uh, some kind of a meditation by just having a virtue just following a virtue it will not stop these uh, latent tendencies come to the emerging state but you are protecting yourself by not doing these verbal bad deeds or the bodily bad deeds by not uh, allowing them to come to the transgression state we call the vitikkama so that is then we call that person is a virtuous person even though he is having some akusala chittas within himself in the emerging state uh, until he did not do anything bad by his body or the speech he still we are uh, like calling him a virtuous person that is not a obstacle to uh, to uh, like maintaining a virtuous life so that is we call the trans non transgression uh, virtue because you are not you are just limiting these defilements within yourselves you are not allowing them to come to the transgression state that is the uh, virtue as non transgression these are the definitions what we are talking about the sila and the second one is the next one is what are the benefits of virtue when you are maintaining a virtuous life these kind of benefits you can experience within your life what are they uh, to gain great wealth in the present life if you are maintaining your life in a very good way in a virtuous way then you will experience you will experience a uh, very good wealth very good facilities within your life in this very life that is the first benefit the second one is to gain a great fame and reputation because if you are a virtuous person if you are uh, refraining from the bad deeds and you are following a uh, disciplinary code and you are doing something good then the others uh, will get to know about your behavior they all talk about you that he is a very good person he is a virtuous person he is not doing bad deeds he is he is always doing good wholesome things so this kind of a reputation will be spreaded throughout the society everyone praise you everyone respect you that is the second benefit uh, by maintaining a virtuous life the third one is to be able to appear with courage and confidence in the any public gathering because uh, you are a virtuous person so you know i have not done bad deeds because you are maintaining a very good life based on your disciplinary code so you know i have not done bad things because i i am i'm following a very vir- a good virtuous life and i'm doing these kind of good things so you don't have any hesitation you don't have any doubt to go to any public gathering to any kind of a social segment because you know your behavior is very good so without any hesitation without any doubt uh, with a very good confident and courage you can go to any kind of a social gathering or a social segment 
that is the uh, third one you will experience within this life if someone is not virtuous if someone is doing bad deed he has that hesitation he will not have that courage to go to a public gathering because he, he is doing something bad so he has that doubt whether they will insult me whether they will complain whether they will ask me to leave the place so because of these kind of hesitations or the doubts he is like uh, reluctant to go to these kind of public gatherings that is uh, he he will experience within this life uh, for a virtuous person that uh, situation is not there he can go to another to any kind of uh, public gathering without any uh, hesitation or doubt with a uh, very good courage and the confidence uh, we call in dhamma we call that the visarada uh, behaving as a visarada you can go to any public place the fourth one is to be able to face death with calmness and serenity every person has to experience this uh, the time the the close situation of his death everyone everyone has to experience that uh, particular moment if someone is a very uh, virtuous person then he will be very confident about his past life about his life because he has not uh, done the bad things he he was maintaining a very good and virtuous life uh, throughout his life uh, the first thing is he has not done bad deeds because we know uh, when we are at the uh, time of the death at the moment very close to the death uh, any karma any karma what we have, what we have done in this very life for the past lives they can emerge they can come to our mind and they the akusalas can take you to the uh, like uh, dugati we call the apayas very un Uh, undesirable places so that is the like uh, that is the bad outcome bad results when you do these kind of unwholesome things if someone has done if someone has not maintained a virtuous life throughout his life if he has done so many bad unwholesome things uh, within his life then he will get frightened he will be like he will get upset when the time of the death come when he is very close to the death because the first thing is he has done so many bad things he has the uh, regrets he is uh, he has the remorses he is like he has that regret feeling about this uh, guilty feeling about his life about the things what he has done in this life so it is the first one and the, the other one is other the dangerous thing is Uh, because of the things he has done in this life these akusala kammas can appear at the time of the death and take him to the undesirable places we call the apayas so it uh, it is the second most dangerous thing what is what can happen uh, at the time of the death if someone is a virtuous person he has done so many bad things the first benefit is when he is at the time of the death he do, he doesn't have that regrets or the remorses he is not repenting about his life because he has not done bad things he was abstaining from these unwholesome uh, things throughout his life the second benefit he is he has done so many merits so many meritorious wholesome things so these wholesome kammas can arise can appear at the time of the death and take him, they can these uh, good kammas can take him to the uh, human world again or the uh, higher divine worlds that is the benefit of the uh, benefit of doing these uh, virtual benefit of maintaining a virtuous life the fifth one is to be reborn at a noble heaven realm of uh, or at least uh, in the human world at a higher position because uh, we were talking about the, in the fourth uh, fact at the time of the death the fifth one the last benefit is after his death he will get a rebirth in this human world itself 
in a very good position in a with very good wealth and with very good parents and uh, all the facilities or this bad this virtuous life will take you take him to the divine world this is the uh, the other benefit so these are the five benefits or the uh, rewards what a person can achieve or the experience in this life next we are going to talk about the foremost classifications of the virtue so there are many i uh, said uh, previously there are many classifications uh, about this virtue but uh, among them i have selected the foremost the most imp important classifications uh, about this virtue that is fourfold uh, classification we call the fourfold purification of morality it is it has four steps uh, we can talk about them the first one is the virtue of pathi mukka restraint based on your disciplinary code or the moral conduct you abstain from the unwholesome things and you follow the uh, good things that is called that is based on the uh, moral conduct what is uh, followed by you uh, we call the pathi mukka sangvara sila the second uh, step second category is the virtue of restraint of the sense facul sense faculties we call the ayatanas uh, we are like protecting we are guarding our sense faculties by guarding uh, we are uh, following we are maintaining a virtuous life the third one is third uh, classification the third segment is virtue of livelihood purification because uh, to maintain our life we have a family sometimes lay, lay, lay people have a family uh, the monks have to uh, like uh, maintain his have to uh, find the uh, foods robes and the dwelling places and the medicine the lay persons they have so many requisites uh, they have to uh, they need a dwelling places and they need a vehicle they need a job they need uh, children so they have they have to do some uh, thing with with uh, their relatives so many requisites are there so any anyhow these uh, requisites you have to earn by yourself okay uh, for a lay person uh, he has to do a job he has to earn money for a monk he has to take them he had to uh, find these uh, requisites uh, through the devotees so anyhow this is a livelihood because uh you have to find these things to maintain your day to day life because uh for in order to in order to maintain your livelihood day to day life you have to earn these things by using a good way by using a bad way uh, that is based on your attitude so if someone is doing something bad in order to uh, maintain his day to day life in order to uh, maintain a good uh, life if someone is doing something bad we call his life or his livelihood is not pure it is polluted if someone is maintaining a good life by earning by finding these requisites in the good way by uh, not doing the akusalas we call that his livelihood is pure we call that virtue of livelihood purification ajiva parisuddhi sila the fourth one is virtue concerning requisites we are the best word is contemplating about the requisites you have earned those things these requisites in a very good way because you followed a, a very good uh, like practice in order to achieve in order to find those requisites that is good your livelihood is pure it is not polluted by the bad deeds even though you have to like contemplate at the time of the consumption that is called the pachya sannisita sila you have to contemplate about these requisites why i have to take these things how do i have to consume these requisites that is called pachya sannisita sila then we have to talk about this each and every segment in this fourfold purification morality so first one is the virtue of restraint with regards to the disciplinary code or the moral conduct we call pathimokka sangvara sila when 
as uh, the virtue of disciplinary discipline prescribed by the buddha is called the pahatimukha sangvarasila it can be differ from person to person we can say uh, for monks it is the upasampada sila the greatest or the highest uh, virtue or the moral conduct disciplinary code in this uh, world that is upasampada sila it is it is protected by the for, ma- for the by the monks uh, and the samanera dasasila we call the 10 precepts which is uh, specifically entitled for the novices we call the samanera dasasila so it is for the novices and for the lay people the uh, compulsory uh, moral conduct is the five precepts the not not less than that but occasionally time to time they can observe the higher uh, moral conducts like eight precepts nine precepts or the 10 precepts occasionally uh, when it is convenient for them or when it is when it is suitable uh, for them they can observe them and protect them so uh, it is uh, based it, it can differ this pati mokka or the disciplinary code can differ from person to person uh, based on his state or their uh, like uh, attitude so someone is like trying to protect or trying to maintain a virtuous life based on this disciplinary code what, what is observed by them or what is followed by them is called the pati mukha sangvara sila uh, we know it is uh, because uh, we have to describe all the precepts all the uh, like uh, like all the facts in these uh, disciplinary codes but it is it will be a very huge explanation so i am not going to do, discuss about all these precepts here I just uh, have a, a rough idea about this pati mukha sangvara sila it is based on the disciplinary code which is uh, followed by you uh, by by using this uh, disciplinary code someone tends to try to uh, like achieve the purification of the morality or the virtue by using this disciplinary code uh, because of the faith if someone is someone is having the faith towards the buddha and if someone is having the faith towards the dhamma or someone is having the faith towards the sangha and towards the nibbana and uh, what is uh, said by the buddha he is believing the word of the buddha okay there are the suffering we have to uh, get rid of these sufferings and the nibbana is the uh, one and only uh, uh, like liberation what we can uh, follow what we can achieve in order to get rid of these aggregates or the suffering so he believes he has that faith and he believes that ultimate liberation he believes that in order to achieve that ultimate liberation there is a path without achieving the path which are, without following the path we cannot achieve the ultimate liberation so based on that beliefs he tries to observe uh, any kind of a virtue or the disciplinary code and he tries to protect those precepts all these uh, facts which is uh, which consist in this uh, disciplinary code therefore the faith is the governing body governing factor or the main factor uh, which keeps going uh, within this segment someone is observing a disciplinary code and someone is following based on the faith without having the faith in his mind he will not observe he will not accept any kind of a disciplinary code because he is not believing there is a path we have to uh, we have to protect the sila we we should uh, become a virtuous person in order to uh, fulfill the the requirement of this uh, spiritual path in order to achieve the nibbana so faith is the governing factor in this segment in this pati mukha sangvara sila then we are going to talk about the second one virtue of restraint of the sense faculties this is what we have uh, we have six uh, sense faculties these are the six faculties eye faculty ear faculty nose faculty 
tongue faculty, body faculty, and mind faculty. We call the uh, chakka aitana, sotha aitana, those Pali names are there. So, by using these faculties, we are dealing with the outside world or the external world. Uh, we are taking the outside object, external objects through these faculties. From the eye faculty, we take the visible object, we call the uh, rupa ramana. And through the ear faculty, we take the audible objects. Likewise, through the nose faculty, we are dealing with the smells. By using the tongue faculty, we are dealing with the taste, we are feeling the tastes. And by using our body faculty, we are experiencing, experiencing the uh, tangible objects. And by using our mind faculty, we are thinking about some things. We call them the mind objects. So through these internal sense faculties or the sense bases, we are taking these external objects. We are dealing with the external world. When someone is not protecting these uh, ex uh, internal sense faculties, whatever the uh, visible object comes to the uh, eye faculty, he takes it and sometimes he will have some uh, attachment towards this thing. Someone will uh, have the craving towards this uh, like a visual object. It can be a, like a, with a mind, it can be a living being, it can be a non-living like physical object. Whatever the thing, when someone is not guarding, not protecting these internal sense faculties, these uh, external objects can create uh, some cravings or the objections we call them like uh, he is uh, like uh, he is not happy with the object what he what he is taking from the eye faculty. The same will happen uh, to the ear ear faculty when there is a uh, audible object come to the ear. When someone is having a very good music, uh, what, is, uh, what he likes, then he will attach to it. He has that uh, good feeling towards that audible object. When someone is hearing some harsh speech, when someone is insulting him by the word, when he hears, he will have an object, objection. Then uh, he will have some hatred mind within himself. So, we are not, if we are not guarding our internal sense faculties based on the external objects we are taking from the external world, we that latent tendencies will come to the emerging state. Then sometimes they will come to the transgression state. Then our sila or the our virtue will be violated. Our morality will be violated. So. Uh, without protecting our internal sense faculties, we cannot protect our disciplinary code because, uh, because uh, we, since we are not protecting, guarding the internal sense faculties, based on the external objects, uh, the latent tendencies come to the emerging state. If we are not dealing with these emerging states properly with the wisdom, then uh, automatically you will you will tend to do some bad bodily actions or the verbal actions, then uh, you will end up with the violation of the moral conduct. So that is why we should uh, focus about this, uh, like the guarding, we call the Indriya Sangvara Sila, the restraint of the sense faculties, restraint of the sense faculties. So uh, we have to focus about these things. We can talk about this thing uh, later. Uh, when how they are mutually connected, how they are uh, supporting the other uh, segments of the other levels. People who are not conscious and live without mindfulness uh, often have, uh, have attachment or objections to the objects taken from the eye. We are to, when we are talking about the eye faculty, uh, they will have the attachment or the craving or the objection towards the objects. When he likes the external uh, visible object, he will have the attachment or the craving. When he uh, doesn't like the uh, visible object, then he will have a hatred mind, objection. Uh, he will have a ill will about this 
obje, uh, the visible object. Clinging is the evil root called the loba. Enmity is said to be the evil root called the dvesha. It is the what we use the, uh, the terms according to Dhamma. If there is attachment or opposition to a certain goal, accordingly, there will be a generation of negative thoughts. Because of that, the self-restraint virtue can also be broken. I have explained, if someone is not guarding his sense faculties properly with the wisdom, uh, with the mindfulness, then these latent tendencies come to the emerging state. Because if he, if he likes that object, the loba anusaya or tanha anusaya come to the emerging state as the loba chetasika, uh, like the craving. If someone doesn't like that object, then if he is not that mindful enough to uh, observe that object properly, then the patiga anusaya, the latent tendency, comes to the emerging state as the dosa, we call the objection, so or the hatred mind. So then someone is not handling this uh, emerging state properly, first he didn't protect the uh, internal sense faculties, then that is the reason to have that emerging state. If someone is not dealing with it, emerge, dealing, dealing with this emerging state properly, with the wisdom, then it comes to the transgression state. Then a vitikkama happens and he will violate his disciplinary code. That is uh, called by, the, uh, that is explained here, uh, uh, the self-restrained virtue can also be broken. The disciplinary code can also be broken. He will violate his, he is not a virtuous person anymore. He has to uh, do the according things the the required things to have the purification again sometimes the lay person has to uh, observe the five precepts again or the broken precept again uh, for a novice he has to take the uh, precepts again for a upasampada monk for a monk for a bhikkhu he has to do the uh, things uh, which is which should be done to uh, maintain the purity of the uh, upasampada sila so so, Indriya Sangvara Sila is to be mindful so as not to create uh, vices, the bad things, based on lust and hatred in relation to the appearance perceived by the senses. That is, we have explained. What is the governing factor? The mindfulness. We call the Sati. When you are dealing with the external world, when you are taking the objects, through your internal sense faculties or the internal sense bases, that is the door. We call the eye door, ear door, uh, and the mind door. These are the doors where the external objects uh, comes to your mind. You are dealing the external world through these internal sense doors or the sense faculties. So when you are not protecting that door, anyone can come inside. In that door, you have to analyze when you take an object, whether this is a good one for me, whether this will help uh, to emerge or the arise, as to uh, arise the uh, latent tendencies to the emerging state. So you have to think about that. When you are like dealing with the objects, then you can, uh, if you have understand, if you have understood that this objection, this object can, uh, can lead to the, emerging, the latent tendencies to come to the emerging state, then you can avoid that object. That is the way you have to guard this sense faculties. Otherwise, any object can come into your mind, then it, they can violate, they can pollute they can uh, take the latent tendencies to the emerging state very easily if you are not mindful enough. So that mindfulness, or the sati, that mental factor is the governing body or the main, main role in this Indriya Sangvara Sila. So if someone is uh, developed, if someone has developed uh, with the mindfulness, so he will have a very good Indriya Sangvara Sila. 
when the indriya sangvara sila or the restraint with the uh, sense faculties then it will be helpful to maintain a very good level of the uh, moral conduct then it will it will supports to uh, get the good level of moral conduct he will be a virtuous person the third one is the virtue of livelihood purification we call the ajiva parisuddhi sila for monks it's a different things we we can talk about the lay people lay people the for for lay people ajiva parisuddhi is refrain from the bad occupation that is the foremost thing because every lay person has to uh, follow some kind of occupation to earn money uh, to earn money to achieve these requisites so uh, in order to that in order to do that uh, for lay people have to have a occupation those occupation uh, for foremost thing is he has to refrain from the bad occupation what are the things a buddha admonished not to do for a lay person the first one there are five uh, bad occupation admonished by the buddha not to do for a lay person the first one is the business in weapon that is the satta vanijja and the business in human beings like uh, you deal with the uh, slavery and the business in the meat uh, business in intoxicants uh, and business in poisons those things are harmful for the others those things are related with the akusala kammas so buddha is admonishing the lay people not to do this kind of occupation because they are uh, obstacle to maintaining a good uh, meritorious or a virtuous life so uh, the foremost thing is you have to uh, avoid these bad occupation first as per the buddha's admonishment that is also ajiva parisuddhi even though you are following a uh, occupation you are doing occupation occupation which is not related to these five bad occupations uh, because not related to these things uh, not uh, like uh, combined with these any kind of a bad thing you are doing a very good uh, occupation in order to earn money in order to maintain your day to day life for in order to like uh, provide the requisites what you need but even though you are uh, like uh, practicing you are doing a good occupation sometimes you can do uh, something bad like you can do the bribing you can do some frauds you can uh, create you can uh, made bad uh, wrong documents so these things can be done in order to achieve in order to earn some more money even though you are not doing this bad five occupation even though you are doing a good occupation uh, while you are doing this sometimes you may experience uh, there are some places you can do something bad in order to earn some money more you have to refrain from this also otherwise you aaj your parisuddhi sila will be polluted will be violated even though he is doing a good occupation which is not included in these five categories he should not do the uh, unwholesome deeds like bribing slandering frauds scams etc there are many things you can do bad in order to achieve in order to earn some more money or to get a higher position in your institute or the company so they should not be done because uh, you are ajiva parisuddhi sila will be violated for a monk it's a different thing because uh, for a monk uh, they have only uh, four requisites so in order to provide these four four, four requisites uh, there are things what we can do and what we cannot do so i'm not going to uh, discuss detailly about these things we i'm focusing about them uh, for the lay people how he they can maintain how they should maintain this ajiva parisuddhi because uh, in order to maintain uh, like the livelihood purification the fourth one the uh, before we go to the fourth one what is the governing body what is the governing factor for this ajiva parisuddhi sila that is the virya because 
that is you can easily find more money by doing bad deeds when you are doing this uh, five uh, bad occupation which is uh, like uh, abandoned by the buddha which is admonished by the buddha not to do so uh, easily they can earn money by just uh, uh, selling the meat by selling intoxicants by selling the poisons uh, selling the drugs these kind of things you can do uh, very easily and find many uh, more money and you can become a rich person within a very short period because it is uh, sometimes you can uh, do some illegal things to earn more money so if someone is not doing this bad occupation only he is uh, following a good occupation and during his this occupation he is not doing any bribing uh, like uh, doing frauds and uh, preparing bad documents scams and slandering to get higher positions he is not doing anything uh, within this occupation it is very difficult because he is he is not having more money he is having only the very little kind of money uh, as the uh, his uh, what, what you call from the company that is uh, not enough sometimes it is not enough for him uh, to maintain his life he may have several kids and he may have a very uh, bad situations in his family in his house he has to develop he has to construct a house he has to uh, pay other rent bills other bills he has to undergo uh, many difficulties during his personal life but still he is maintaining a good purification level for his livelihood it is based on the effort if he lose this effort he tends to do bad things just to earn more money just to take a higher position in the company this is what we call uh, the base on the effort without effort you will tend to do some bad things within this livelihood within this uh, process of earning money so that is why this ajiva parisuddha sila or the purification of the livelihood is uh, based on the the governing factor will be the virya or the effort or the energy the fourth one is the virtue of concerning or the contemplating about the requisites we call the pacha sannisita sila uh, the by using the wisdom contemplate about the requisites at the time of their consumption because now you have uh, gathered you have accumulated the requisites what you want what you need for your day to day life that's okay you have not done any bad thing to in order to uh, accumulate those uh, requisites in order to fulfill these requisites you have done a very uh, like a pure thing like uh, you have maintained a purification level of your ajiva parisuddha sila your livelihood is pure but um, even though you have not done anything bad in order to uh, provide or the fulfill these requisites but at the time of the consumption if you are not mm, contemplative enough if you are not use if you are not using the wisdom at the time of the consumption sometimes let's take uh, an example when you are eating something if you are not contemplating about this requisite why i have to eat this thing what is the main purpose of having food just to maintain my life just to have a healthy uh, body healthy uh, condition in my life just to quench my thirst or the hunger these are the main requisites main uh, like goals uh, what you have to take food these are the needs these are the things you have to focus uh, when you are taking the food for your requisite if you are not contemplative enough you are not thinking about the actual need actual requirement why you need to take food so then uh, you will be focusing not about the real requirement not not about the maintaining life not about maintaining a healthy body and mind not about uh, maintaining a very uh, like a, a strength in your body and uh, like 
quenching your thirsty and the uh, hunger you are not focusing about this main requirement actual requirement you are focusing about the taste you are focusing about the amount what you can eat so uh, like uh, like with the craving with a greedy mind you try to you tend to uh, consume this food then the akusala chittas the loba the craving attachment will come to your mind so you are consuming these requisites by using the uh, akusala chittas that is a not that is not a good thing so you have to contemplate about these things otherwise even though your livelihood is a pure one is a good one but if you are not protecting if you are not contemplating about the real requirements of these requisites then you are dealing with the uh, akusala chittas at the time of the consumption then it is a not good thing uh, and your purification of this pachya sannisita sila the virtue of concerning requisites is not pure it will be violated that is why i have why i have mentioned by using the wisdom contemplate about the requisites that you have to contemplate you have to think about what are the real requirements uh, to use these requisites what are the uh, real uh, needed things what i have to fulfill by using that particular requisite they can be food they can be clothes they can be like uh, the other medicines they can be at dwelling places they can be a transportation facilities so these everything you can contemplate at the time of the consumption at the time of the accumulation uh, so in these both uh, situations you can contemplate about the real requirements of these requisites the at the time of their consumption then the use of the requisites is purified by the reflection by the contemplation uh, what is the governing factor in this part in this uh, concerning requ uh, uh, requisites or the contemplating part that is done by the uh, wisdom we call the panya because without using the wisdom you cannot focus about the real requirements of these requisites then without using the wisdom when you are trying to consume these requisites food clothes dwelling places medicine whatever the requisite then you tend to focus about the other unnecessary uh, perspectives or the things like the uh, taste like the the color like the uh, the social reputation these things you are trying to focus then you are like the uh, latent tendencies come to the emerging state then you are consuming these requisites with akusala chittas that is not a good thing they, that's why the wisdom is needed the governing factor for this pachya sannisita sila is panya wisdom if you are using the panya if you are using the wisdom if you are contemplative enough by using this wisdom then you are not uh, dealing with the requisites with akusala chittas always the wisdom get the main role get in act and uh, wisdom will not allow uh, akusala chittas to arise at the time of the consumption so these are the four main uh, segments in this uh, fourfold purification morality so we have discussed all the things all the four segments in this fourfold path then we are trying to uh, discuss about the mutual connection how they support each other each segment uh, between these four factors or four segments how we uh, understand about this thing when something uh, is done when uh, let's talk about from the uh, the fourth one the like uh, dealing with the requisites at the time of the consumption if you are not focusing enough if you are not con contemplative enough with these requisites then you tend to focus about the unnecessary uh, sides of this requisite like what, what i have said like the taste then you are try to focus about the taste then the greediness come 
then the attachment or the craving towards these foods come then you try to take as much as you can you are not focusing about the amount what is actually needed for you you have you are focusing about the taste and you try to grab you try to uh, eat as much as you can because you are uh, try to consume more the amount will be higher because sometimes it will be uncomfortable when you finish your meal because you are not uh, contemplating about the real amount what is needed for your existence what is needed for your actual requirement so you are focusing about the greediness or the taste then you are trying to uh, like take more food and beverages uh, to just to ful fulfill your greediness then sometimes you have to go to very luxury places uh, like the star oriented places sometimes you are uh, like going to the other countries abroad just to quench your greediness just to experience uh, some new uh, foods some new expensive uh, food items or the beverages because you are not focusing about the actual requirements of the food what is the actual requirement uh, to maintain your life to maintain the healthy uh, standards or the healthy condition in your mind and the body uh, you have to uh, like maintain your strength in your body in order to do the day to day life and just to quench your thirsty and the hunger uh, these are the real requirement if you are not focusing about these real requirements you are going to very expensive places just to experience these ex uh, different different kinds of foods just to quench your uh, greediness just to quench your craving for those kind of requirements then you need uh, more money because when you want to go uh, star oriented places hotels just to experience some new uh, categories new kinds of foods and beverages you need to earn some more money then uh, sometimes uh, sometimes you have you want you have that feeling you have that urge to go different countries just to experience their foods just to uh, like uh, analyze just to explore the some tradition food traditions because you are not focusing about that real requirement of the food so uh, in order to uh, fulfill those requirements because now you are focusing about the taste the different uh, like traditions different uh, like amount what you can take so you want you need more money in order to spend those places in in order to spend on these different uh, uh, food tradition different star oriented expensive foods so you need to earn more money so then your requirements are very complex then uh, in order to earn more money sometimes you tend to do some bad deeds while you are doing your occupation sometimes you tend to do uh, the bad occupation sometimes even though you are doing a good occupation within that good occupation you try to do some uh, bribing uh, uh, you try to do some uh, scams you try to do some slandering just to take some higher position promotions within your company and just to take some more money because your requirements you are uh, like uh, Uh, requirements are very complex because you are not focusing about the real requirements so uh, to earn more money you may violate your ajiva parishuddha sila your livelihood will not be pure if your livelihood is not pure because you are always uh, try to earn more money just by doing some bad deed unwholesome things then your mind is not pure your mind is not Uh, dealing with wholesome things because always that unrest is there that frightness that you are uh, frightened about the things what you have done so you are not in a very happy position because you have done something bad within your company within your job 
uh, so you have done some scams you are frightened whether this will be revealed whether the others the higher positions the uh, the boss will get to know what you have done within the company that unrest is there he is always like suffering from the things what he has done just to earn more money whether the colleagues will get to know what you have done so this unrest suffering the uncomfortability is there because you have done bad things just to earn more money then you are like uh, first you are pachya uh, sannisita sila is violated then the what happened because of that you wanted to earn more money your ajiva parisuddhi sila is violated then because of that uh, because of the violated uh, ajiva parisuddhi sila that unrest that suffering that uncomfortability is there then you cannot focus about the indriya sangvara sila you cannot guard you cannot protect you cannot call mindfulness uh, inact in your mind you cannot get the help of the mindfulness to guard to protect your internal sense faculties then the you are dealing with the external world with unrest with uh, the suffering with that uncomfortability you are not that convenient condition because uh, mindfulness cannot do the perfect job your sense faculties are not guarded not protected any defilement can come because of the objects you are dealing with the external world then uh, at the end of the day uh, your indriya sangvara sila will also be violated then what would happen when the uh, violated indriya sangvara sila is maintained your disciplinary code is in a danger state because at the at any time you can do some bad deeds or the verbal uh, unwholesome things and your disciplinary code we call the patimukka sangvara sila will be violated so uh, based because you you are not focusing about the pachya sannisi sila at the time of the consumption uh, the result was your ajiva parisuddha sila is violated polluted then because of that your indriya sangvara sila is Uh, vulnerable and it is polluted it is uh, not pure because of that you are patimukka sangvara sila also vulnerable uh, and it at the end of the day it is violated if you are focusing about the real requirements of your requisites what you are uh, like uh, using for your day to day uh, things then you are you are wise enough you are contemplative enough about the requisites what you are dealing what you are using if you are uh, focusing about the real requirements of these requisites then you know that you don't have to go for expensive things you don't have to uh, go for expensive foods expensive places just to uh, like quench the thirsty just to quench the hunger just to have your that strength in your body that healthy condition in your body and the mind just to maintain your life you don't have to spend more money you don't have to go to expensive places when you talk about the clothes when you talk about the dwelling places it's the same you know what is the actual requirement what why i need that requisite for me for my day to day life so he is contemplating about that requisite okay that is the real requisite so i don't need have to uh, spend more money about this thing because actual requirement is this so i don't have to spend much thing i don't have to go for expensive things in order to quench in order to fulfill my actual requirement then his life is very simple it is not a very complex things uh, then he try he he can easily uh, avoid the bad things when he is doing the livelihood he is he not tends to uh, do the bad things or the unwholesome things while he is doing a bad occupation because he has that happiness he had that simple uh, lifestyle within himself so that uh, at a very low level of uh, income he can survive he can maintain his life so he will 
he will not tend to do bad things while he is doing his occupation then his uh, because he had the uh, good level of the pachya sannisita sila then his uh, like what we call the, the ajyo parisudu sila the livelihood will be pure it will not be violated it will be, it will be protected by the pachya sannisita sila then what would happen if he, if if the ajyo parisudu sila or the livelihood is protected then he is not doing he is not doing any bad things while while he is doing the occupation he doesn't have that unrest he doesn't have that suffering he doesn't have that doubt about his occupation he is where he has that courage or the confident happiness within his mind so he can focus about his internal sense faculties while he is doing day to day things day to day duties while he is doing the uh, occupation while he is dealing with the family while he is dealing with the other social segments so because he is very happy person and he he doesn't have that unrest he has that calmness in his mind so he can focus he can uh, let the mindfulness to do the job to protect his to guard his internal sense faculties so uh, by having a very good level of the uh, purification level of the livelihood uh, automatically then he can uh, protect he can maintain a good level of sense faculties he can achieve the virtue of the rest in with regards to the sense faculties when he has a good level of indriya sangara sila then uh, always he is trying to deal with the external world with the mindfulness then automatically uh, there is a very good protection for the disciplinary code he can maintain a very good moral conduct he can maintain the morality or the virtue in a very good level because always he is mindful enough to deal with the external world with 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 the whatever the object comes through these uh, uh, internal sense of sense faculties he will not tend to do the bad things by using his body or the verbal actions then at the end of the day his uh patimukha sangvara sila will be protected those are the mutual connections uh, in between these four segments so concerning requisites is governed by the wisdom and it helps to improve the livelihood purification i have described livelihood purification is governed by effort and it helps to improve restraint of the sense faculties when the restraint of the sense faculty is governed by mindfulness it helps to protect the disciplinary code protecting of the disciplinary code because the patimukha sangvara sila when it is it is governed by the faith and then the virtue will be pure that is the uh, that is how these each and every segment supports to the the previous segment how they are mutually interconnected uh, in order to have a very good level of the morality then we are going to talk about the final stage how the virtue becomes a prerequisite for the concentration when you have a great uh, level of the purification of the sila morality then it helps to uh, free achieve the freedom from remorses we call the avipatisara you will not have the regrets or the repentings about what you have done or what you have not done because of the sila virtue you will have the freedom from remorses when you have a free re, uh, free from uh, remorses or the repentings you that it generates the joy within yourself when you have that pamojja or the joy the rapture the joy is the initial stage of the uh, happiness the young age or the initial stage rapture is the very like the developed happiness or the strong level of the happiness then you, when you have the pamojja within your mind the rapture will arise within your mind when you have rapture or the peace in your mind that uh, pasaddi or the serenity will arise in your body your uh, body will have that like good that comfortable feeling and when the serenity or the pasaddi is there then the pleasure Uh, the sukha will arise within your body that comfortability will be there uh, 
the pleasure. When you have the pleasure, the concentration will be there. The, your mind tends to uh, concentrate about the object, about when you try to do meditation, you can easily get that tranquility stage. You can easily come to the access concentration levels. You can easily come to the absorption levels or the jhanas. So because of the pure sila, because of the sila, you get the patisara, freedom from remorses. Then you feel you uh, get the joy or the pamujja. Then the rapture arises, the piti, then the serenity, the pa pasaddi arises. Then because of the pasaddi, pleasure or the sukha arises. Then because of the, the mental comfortability and the uh, bodily comfortability, then your mind tends to concentration. Mind can easily concentrate about the meditative objects. That is the after when you have the samadhi, the other uh, higher levels will be achieved. But I am not going to talk about these things because we have not described the higher levels of the spiritual practice. So uh, I wanted to explain how the uh, virtue become a prerequisite for the concentration. That is the last a topic I wanted to describe. That is how the virtue helps to, by the step by step, uh, how the virtue become a prerequisite. Uh, like how the virtue, how the morality helps to uh, develop the concentration within yourself. How the samadhi arises. So with that thing, I'm going to uh, uh, end up the today's sermon. So we have talked about as a, as a summary, we can talk about, we have talked about what is the virtue, some uh, aspects, some perspectives, perspective, some definitions we have talked, we discuss about this sermon and we talk about the benefits of the virtue and the foremost classification of the virtue and what are the elements of that foremost classification. We go the fourfold uh, purification of morality, what are the segments, what are the elements and how they are mutually interconnected. How they, how, they support, how they support each and every segment in order to maintain, maintain a good morality or the good virtue. And the, finally, we talk about how this virtue become a prerequisite. Why we need sila to uh, develop the concentration. So, this is the summary what we have talked about, what we have discussed within this Dhamma sermon. So, we have accumulated so many merits. Uh, I have accumulated the Dhamma Desana merit and you have accumulated Dhamma Savana, uh, listening to the Dhamma and both of us, uh, we have accumulated the Yoniso Manisikara. We were like uh, thinking about the Dhamma facts in a very good level. So these merits we should uh, uh, like uh, send, we can uh, transfer these merits to our teachers who ordain us, to our parents. Uh, and other teachers who are uh, teaching our Dhamma, teaching us the Dhamma. Uh, so all these merits may be a very good and strong cause to achieve their uh, wishes and the ultimate Nibbana as they uh, expect to achieve. And also we, we should transfer these all the merits to our relatives, to our friends who have passed away and who are expecting these kind of merits. May they rejoice these uh, merits and uh, may this will be a good cause to achieve their ultimate liberation as their expected ways. And also we should transfer these merits to the all the devas or the brahmas who protect us, uh, who protects you and who uh, protect this uh, Sambuddha Sasana and the world and may all these merits uh, may all uh, the devas and brahmas rejoice these all the merits and may they have a good desirable results and uh, may this uh, will be a great cause for them to achieve the expected uh, paths and fruitions and ultimate nibbana. And uh, finally, I would like to uh, wish all you, all the listeners who have joined for this Dhamma sermon and may you all have these merits. Uh, in order to achieve a desirable result, uh, desirable results in this very life and have a good healthy mind and body in order to practice this Dhamma within this life 
and may these merits will be a great cause to uh, achieve the desirable lives until you achieve the ultimate Dibbana and uh, may these all merits will be a great cause uh, to achieve the expected paths and fruitions uh, and, uh, and achieve the ultimate liberation or the ultimate Nibbana uh, for all of you. And may all you have the blessings of the triple gems.